Today is a sad day. We are losing crew. We've gained crew, we've also lost crew. They are here booking, look at them. Look at them just booking away. Just booking away like they don't even care about me. <coughs> did you guys have fun? Who had fun? I had a blast. You did, would you come back? I will, co am I coming yes, back? Yes, of course, so. of course. Douglas, how many days were you told that you were gonna be here? Oh, nice. I've had that three times. <laughs> <laughs> how long, how long were you, how long did I tell you you were gonna be here? It's a three hour tour. <laughs> how long were you actually here? Uh, a couple years. <laughs> I don't know. Well, well, I'm trying. Trying. <laughs> Look at his hair. <laughs> no, he shaved his beard. My hair was shaved when I got here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was shaved. <laughs> and we got a new, we got a new crew member. You guys know this guy. Say hi, squirrel. Hola. Yeah, so a real turn of events. I know I didn't tell you guys, but surprise, we're all back. Fun. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna either leave tonight or chill for a day or two and just uh, do some YouTube stuff, some Daily Show stuff. Have you guys seen The Daily Show? It's amazing. I do it almost every day. I've been a little bit off track because we've been offshore, but um, back to yoga and all of that fun stuff that we do over there, and I'm excited. So. That's what's going on. Next stop, Cabo. Ha ha ha. We have dubbed this trip, what did we call it? 90 left. 90 left. 90 degrees left. <laughs> we've stopped many, many times and it's been amazing. So we've had a good time. We've seen a lot more than we thought we were gonna see. What, what's that look? <laughs> what does that look on your face? You loved it. The hairless pussy. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna show him your hairless pussy friend? <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. He thinks that I won't post it because he's just so <coughs> he is wrong. <laughs> Next shot is gonna be of them just going away on the dinghy. I'm gonna be here by my lonesome. They showed up late last night. I tried to video, but the electricity was out, so we were by candlelight and the camera didn't focus. So we did have a good time. It's happening. They're leaving. <laughs> just, you I was supposed there. to be back on the tenth. You look like a Canadian Canadian Santa. I know. <laughs> And I need a poodle leash. Okay, there's a poodle leash and there's a poodle. Oh, poodle, he sees bags, he's scared. This is so short. I know. <laughs> I do. <laughs> oh, thank you yeah. so much. We'll do it again. Yes. Maybe you won't hate me the next time. Oh, you know. <laughs> I might. <laughs> Well, let me know when the smell's gone and I'll bring okay, you back to stitch. While. See you, Cal. Oh, love you. I'm excited. <laughs> now we're alone. Oh no. What are we gonna do? It's just me and Squirrel. All right, you guys will be missed dearly, deeply, truly. It was a great 10 day trip, seven day trip. It was freaking <laughs> wonderful. It was three weeks later. We just thought these life jackets out because we're cool. Yeah. <laughs> Who needs safety? Who needs safety last? What's that? Who, Who needs, needs safety? safety? Yeah, I thought you said we need safety. I was like, fucking serious? <laughs> this is my replacement? <laughs> Poodle. Bye, poo poo, don't fall in. No, no, snake. You got some gin and some wine, Aubrey. When you Perfect. Again. Yep, I'm going to be blazed when Cyril comes back. Yeah. Okay, bye, boys. All my boys, except for my hairless Can pussy. Yeah. I didn't say goodbye to your hairless but pussy. I'm gonna hold that. Yeah. I'm trying to get the line from under the bow. Well, that's sad. I lost my crew. I had so much fun with them. They were great. Wow, that dinghy is really loaded down. <laughs> Okay, Cyril has made us breakfast. Tuna. Look at you, handsome man. Gotta make us make sure we are well fed so we can <laughs> tackle these cold nights. It's not that cold. <laughs> and tomorrow we're gonna go offshore. We're gonna go 200 miles to Cabo, we hope. There's not really places to duck in, so let's hope it goes well. Mmm, really good. First thing the starboard tank was sloshing around a little bit and they maybe stirred up a little bit of water also through winter it could have just built up a little bit of condensation so there might be a little bit of diesel bug going on there um, however andy from kti filters he sent us some of this product called pro plus active 
which is a additive for diesel fuel systems. It's supposed to clean the tank, strainers, filters, injectors, and hopefully by letting it sit for a little while, it can kill whatever condensation and bug might be residing in that starboard tank. So let's give this a bash. So each of these bottles can treat about 3,500 liters of diesel. So it's got measurement marks on the back here. So I kind of guesstimate that we're putting in 200 gallons over yesterday and today. All right, Andy from Keenan Filters, you really came through for us. We use Keenan Filters so, so much. It was so helpful on the way from LA down to Mexico. The alarms went off, we were able to switch filters. We, did, we didn't listen to the alarm once just to see what would happen, the engine died. It's a really reliable system and I'm so thankful to have it. Thank you so much, Andy, if you're watching this for coming and installing this from Keenan Filters. So uh, right now we're going to transfer fuel over to the starboard side and fill up that tank because as Sorol was saying, we had uh, some growth in there that happened over the winter. So we're gonna fill that one completely up and then polish it over to the starboard tank and then we'll even them out, maybe. We'll see, we're gonna polish back and forth. Get that fuel nice and squeaky clean before we leave in a couple days to head down to Cabo. So we're gonna pull from this tank mm -hmm. and we're gonna put it into... So that tank should be opened. Yeah. So we're gonna pull from this tank, mm -hmm. pull it through, and we're gonna fill up this tank till that tank's full. All right, so then we need to close this return here, is that correct? That. No, that all the controls we just use on these manifolds. Okay. Yeah. Because I had trouble. Um, I left this control closed, this one right here closed when I was trying to use this tank, and it didn't work. That that control was closed there we'll in the see. off position. <laughs> yeah. We're like, why are we why are we getting so much pressure? The fuel filters are clean. We changed the fuel filters, and we figured out that we didn't have the right lever opened. I should probably, when we get up to Laredo, we should take these bowls off and clean them nicely so okay. you can see them. So I am watching the fuel gauge fill up right now because if I leave this on, it's just gonna pump diesel out the side of the boat. So just gotta keep a watchful eye here. Okay, so starboard tank is pretty much full right now. So I'm gonna drain the bowl or just inspect to see if there's any liquid or any sort of contaminants in the bowl at the moment. And then I'm gonna switch it over to picking up off the starboard tank and returning to the starboard tank. So basically, just polish the starboard tank. And then I'll be working outside. I'll be able to hear if any alarms trigger so we can see what's going on with our starboard tank. Here you can see there's a little bit of contaminants inside the first bowl. I will drain that out, not in use, and then this bowl, yeah, that's clean. So far, so good. pretty cool on Mike Beamer's boat. Uh, he is one of the professors at the Skagit um, Marine Institute up in um, Anacortes. He had a reservoir made of glass, which was like an old oil lamp. And um, it was basically like an overfill reservoir for his hydraulic system. So um, he filled that up and if the hydraulic system was leaking, that reservoir would slowly empty. And so it was kind of a way to have a gauge to see how much um, hydraulic fluid you had in your system. So, eek. So I thought that was really neat. It also looked really cool. It's like this pink fluid and uh, it's a little bit decorative, which is cool. Um, you can add to it and as long as you have um, the fluid in your reservoir, then you know that you're not going to have a depressurized system. 
uh, with the hydraulics. So um, that will be something cool to add. I don't know if we would add that to the upper helm or the lower helm. I would imagine. Do you think we'd look, add the reservoir to the upper helm or the lower helm? Yeah, it would have to be the top helm. Yeah, so that might be a little bit difficult because it is a glass piece, so it would be delicate, but they're super cool. So um, anyways. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> You would be hydraulic covered, kitty cat. <laughs> Slide your way through life. <laughs> no! Par okay. Parkour! Danger close. <laughs> I give it two seconds. Twenty seconds. 20 two seconds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's one very sneaky over there. So fun fact, what we call a crescent wrench, which that's an adjustable, but they call a spanner. When I say they, I mean South Africans. Get that it's very tight. So I don't make it it's that one. I don't think it's the smaller one. I don't think it's the smaller one either. It looks like the top of the L. Oh yeah, it looks like it's gonna be, from what I can see, it looks like it's right up there. Is there enough slack in this? I just kind of so now we're tight like a tiger. So now it's time to top up the hydraulic fluid um, at the upper helm. So Cyril's up there with the oil rag and we're just gonna put a little bit in. We've also added um, this puppy potty pad to the bed here because if it leaks, it will leak out of this space right here and come down onto the bed. So let's go up and check out this filling. All right, so that's gonna be the fill, and then the one in the back is the overflow, right? I think I'm just gonna go with the with the breather hole is. Okay. So if we ever had that, like, you mm -hmm. know, the glass apparatus, mm -hmm. it would basically just have a tube that runs into that one. Okay. So even if we knew there was a leak or something, we'd see bubbles come up. Right. Okay. Cool. There wasn't that much in the build, you know. Cyril has gotten down and dirty in here and cleaned up the engine bay. We still have to stow these things back in there, but he's gonna add some more stuffing to the stuffing box. Stuffing to the stuffing box. What you got here? So this. So this is the crank crease breather, and it's basically an oil vapor separator. And this has a little O-ring. This is probably still the original O-ring, and that lives inside here and then that gets clamped down. Um, and that's where we've been getting a lot of the leaking, I'm noticing. Yeah, so we've got a leak that's coming from here, and then we also got a leak from this piece here. You can see mm -hmm. this is just completely gone. Even if we don't have that size right now, that should be at any automotive store, and I'm pretty sure there's something here in town. So good morning. Today is the day that we sail down to Cabo. Hopefully, hopefully we make it to Cabo. The theme of this trip has been 90 degrees, left. hard left. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going offshore. And then something breaks and then 90 degrees, hard left. So uh, Doug and Daryl and I were laughing about the theme of this trip and I really hope that we can just make it down to Cabo. Um, this trip today is going to be Searle's first offshore trip on Houdini and we're very excited about that. Are you excited? Sure. Yeah. Let's do. Um, yeah, so it's nice to have Cyril back on the boat. He uh, spent the last couple days re-familiarizing himself with all of the systems because he's been gone for several months in South Africa. Um, actually, five months. Yeah. That's been crazy. Um, I've had a lot of family health issues with my son and my dad and myself. So if you've noticed the videos uh, last season for season 15 were pretty sporadic. Also, Searle was gone. We can talk more about why he was gone later, but he's back now, now that we're in Mexico and out of the States. So that's exciting. And um, yeah, so we're really happy to be creating content again regularly, back on The Daily Show. Um, lots of really fun health and yoga um, there on The Daily Show. I have made a pretty big transformation myself after my injury and I'm feeling better than I ever have. So um, I've got lots to share with you over there. Uh, so definitely check out The Daily Show. All right, so um, we've got a couple of things that we need to do before we get going, which is, uh, a little latch that goes on to the cupboards um, because some of them broke. The alloy on the latches is not a great alloy. It's pretty soft metal. Um, 
so if you have broken i love the design but the actual um the durability of it isn't great but we have a whole bunch of them so we're going to replace some we're going to add some others because the cupboards are just smacking around and i was really nervous that we're going to break some teak you guys know how i feel about my teak so we're going to do that we have to load the dinghy um, and then we're going to go through how we start the boat because there was a lot of uh, learning curve we blew a few fuses and uh, there's a perco system here Perco, Perco, um, where you can choose a battery bank. We have two battery banks, we have a starting bank and a house bank. So we need to start on the starting bank. Um, the house batteries are not great. Um, they have had trouble balancing. We I think we got uh, four kind of bad batteries, if you will, and one good battery from Rain Energy. So they can't support really starting the engine uh, very well. So we're gonna start on the starting battery as we should anyway. It's just something to remember. So we'll go through the systems that we make sure are on when we start the boat and get ready to go. And yeah, it's just been really neat just kind of making her my own. When the crew came on before, I said, you know what? Um, you know, Cyril and I have been building this boat for a couple of years, but it, she's still new to me. She's still new and I'm still learning all about how to run her and be the captain of this boat. So um, lots of exciting stuff. What do you think, Eek? Are you ready? Go places? Yeah. You like sailing, huh? This is my late breakfast, early lunch, which is bone broth and steamed broccoli. And Cyril's having yogurt and granola. So today we're gonna handle a few things on the boat. Now we're going through this fish. I say we, I mean Cyril is going through this fish. We're gonna cook whatever is good. He's doing the sniff test. A texture test. Which typically, if the sniff test is necessary, I try to avoid the situation, but we caught so many tuna, I really don't want to be wasteful. So <laughs> maybe we'll eat the cooked tuna when we drop the hook because uh, having tummy issues underway, not fun. Uh... Yeah. Okay, so today it's a two-man dinghy haul, <laughs> which should be interesting. So. Um, Cyril's gonna be on the winch and I'm gonna be kind of guiding this thing onto the deck, which took two people before. So we'll see how this goes. Touring Nat Geo boat. I don't know, but we're going to pass it here. Okay. Thanks, and our house makes me like the better healthy mojitos. Where's Eek? Fireplace going for kitty. Naked kitty. Oh, naked kitty. Oh, there's a naked kitty. You're caught on that lazy jack again. Do you want me to come up and give you a hand? No. Okay, I think that if you're gonna get kind of lucky, right, if you crank it like right at the right moment, when it flaps over. Oh, you are, shoot. Okay, so you're gonna, you're gonna have to come down probably more. Yeah, looks good. Man, you don't even see use a bit of that. I know, it's great, huh? Get an easy C, huh? Let's see there. Cool. What's so easy of it? I don't know. When did you show me? So Whoops, we got cool. half speed. Huh? Oh, it helps if we got <laughs> got that in the teeth. Okay. So right. we got half speed. We got normal winch okay pretty cool and then we've got full octane strength <laughs> king, king, king. that's pretty cool king, king. all right nice thank you easy seat 
Yeah. All right, we have left Magdalena Bay. It took us about an hour and a half. Would you say two hours to get out of the... We left at 1.30, we reached the mouth at about three. We just hoisted the sails and now we're under full sail and the sun's going down. It's so beautiful. We're on our way to Cabo. So there aren't any duck out stations, if you will, <laughs> or points really from here. Uh, Cabo, uh, the weather looks really fair. We have about 14 knots um, coming off of our quarter beam. What is that? Does that mean we're on a beam? We're on a far reach, I'm we're on a run. Something, something run. We're on a something run. I wish I knew more sailing vernacular. I know how to make us go, but I don't know how to tell you how we're doing it. Um, anyway, we're getting about five knots and I'm super happy to have Searle back here. There he is, looking all handsome. How do you feel? Uh, a little bit hot and sweaty. Yeah, who needs electric winches? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, the A-team's back. Well, good morning. Uh, the wind was non-existent last night, flat calm, and it was beautiful, beautiful starry night. Uh, this morning, it is now 6, 50 and the sun is up and it's absolutely gorgeous out. The wind has clocked around so that we'll be able to sail. We're gonna pull out on a starboard tack and uh, and get to sailing. Uh, Searle's down below and uh, I'm gonna wait to pull the sail out until he comes up. The roller furler on the Genoa is skipping out of the drum. So I'm not really sure how that's happening. I've seen it happen now twice and I just want to make sure that I have somebody else on deck in case I have to run forward and fix that. So I'm gonna let him sleep for a little bit longer, watch this beautiful, beautiful sunrise, and then we'll start sailing. So we have done about a hundred miles and uh, we've been mostly under power, under engine power, and now we're going to get to sail. We had seen that the wind was going to clock around at about 17, 22 knots, which is a great uh, wind speed like this big old boat at. So those wind speeds used to really scare me in some of my lighter boats, like the Hunter or the Cal, but these, these big girls with a full keel really take it very nicely. So uh, the wind was um, at our stern and we were running just dead downwind and we don't have the proper uh, spinnaker or downwind sail set up at this point to run. So now that the wind is clocked around, we're gonna get to sailing today. So that's fun. We can turn the old Ford Lehman off and give her a break and check the fluids. She's been burning a little bit of oil. I'm not sure what seals. I think maybe the front crankshaft seal replaced but that is above my pay grade. So Searle's gonna take a look at that. But anyway, I'm gonna enjoy this gorgeous sunset with you guys and then we'll get the sails out in a little bit. Taking advantage of the better weather, try to get some nice warm food in our bellies, keep the engine going, eh? Oh yeah. It is the end of the day, <laughs> and um, Cyril's cooking dinner. We have about seven hours to go until we reach Cabo, and it will be midnight, give or take. And yeah, it's been a beautiful day. The weather's been gorgeous and uh, really super, super happy to be out here. So we have about seven hours until we reach Cabo and we're going at about six and a half knots. We're motor sailing. Searle's making dinner in there. It smells amazing. Um, it's funny, whenever someone cooks garlic and onion and oil or butter, you're like, what is it that you're making? What magic is happening about down there? It's three ingredients, onion, 
garlic and butter. <laughs> so he's making some steak. Man, on this trip, I went to Costco and I bought about $800 worth of carbohydrates and ate them with the guys. So we're gonna have to do a little cleanse when we get the hook down for a little bit. Um, <laughs> we're having a party. So the engine is off and we are sailing. What? Brain's not ticking right now, but what so Bob does <laughs> Oh, what about I'm Bob? really not firing an all cylinders. Ink, you're gonna be left here alone for the very first time ever. It's like yeah, I'm busy right now, I'm thinking about them one. <laughs> We're gonna go get some water. Um, I have been feeling super dehydrated, even though I've been drinking a ton of water. And I think that this has to do with the water maker. So um, the water maker takes all the minerals and everything out. Are you feeling dehydrated? Yeah. So we're gonna go get maybe? Oh yes, coconut water and some bottled high alkaline water. Yeah, something like that. Look how handsome he is. Can I keep them? Look how beautiful she is. Send them back to the factory. Just pump them out in South Africa. Apparently. <laughs> Just they come out a little bit darker complexion. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Okay. Perfect time of the day to go diving. All right, it's pretty busy here. I'm actually really glad we didn't pull this morning. Holy cow, this would have been stressful. Question, we can get out, but can we get back in? The turtle could climb around. All right, so that's the trash area? That's the trash area. Goodbye. Okay. I always feel terrible, a beautiful place, and immediately leaving them my garbage. Um, it's kind of one of the, it's like one of the, the dark secrets of sailing. We go to these beautiful remote islands and we take them a bag of trash. Everything's packaged, so packaged, but um, we do our best. All right, so we are now on the hunt for a lock for the boat and a dinghy chain. I would really like an ice cream because that's what helps me look really good in my bikini. Just kidding. Um, no, I just want an ice cream. It sounds so good. You know, uh, the things that a sailor always really craves when they've been out to sea is a shower, a salad, ice cream, and then eventually a washing machine. Uh, I would say a cold beer. Like, okay. A, like a cold draft, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like that oh, yeah, glass like that a comes tap. out of the fridge and it's like condensating right there in front of your eyes. What boat light. were you trying to put a beer tap on? Was that moonlight? Yeah, you guys are I think all boats need a beer tap. <laughs> I'm like, you're gonna... you can also do gin and tonic on tap. <laughs> like you're gonna use a whole cupboard just for a keg. I mean, I like where your head's at, but... Poodle has found the chain and I have found this lock. Score. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Uh -huh. ah. <laughs> yeah. um, this was a lovely place. It's called Cabo Cantoritos. And uh, they give you your cup, which is fun. There's no markings on it. I'm going to use it as a vase. This is an urn for when I cause shit on the boat. You want to live and in this. And this is another urn if Poodle snaps at Eek one more time. Oh, poor Eek. <laughs> well, we're going to go find some flowers and some leche con almendra. Almond milk. I'm really trying to learn Spanish. It's really embarrassing. I probably won't make you suffer through any more of my Spanish lessons. So we've got a couple things from the store. We brought one bag. One plastic. And, and we practice the most extreme level of self-restraint, one margarita this whole time. I know, can you believe it? But I, now I want cotton candy. Oh good, it's unlocked. And we still have a dinghy. Look at that beautiful high field dinghy. Uh. <laughs> Chasing tail. What are you doing? And I'm gonna top down this. You better do it before it gets dark. As you said, it was perfect lighting. This it was. has got a disco butt. Nice. Oh boy. There it goes. <laughs> Why not? It must be some sort of setting on you. Oh, this is hard. 